Welcome today, entrepreneurial agent listeners. Today, I have this, the distinct honor and privilege of inviting and listening to as a guest today, Kelly Litke from the, the Crush Real Estate Team in Virginia, Newport News, Virginia, the leader, the owner, and the, the fearless leader of that great team focusing in the peninsula area of Virginia. And uh, Kelly, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me, Paul. Much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be great. So let's just kind of start off if we can and just tell me a little about how you got in real estate. You said you told me before you've been around nine years. I know you're a top producer in a team, but how, how did you get there? Well, I am a high D personality and that just means I think I can do it better than everyone else. So my husband and I were buying our first house actually, and we were buying in Maryland. He's active duty military. Funny enough, we were stationed here at Langley at the time. And the agent called us at nine o'clock one night and told us we had to be at a home inspection at eight o'clock the next morning. It was a four hour drive. So I was kind of like, oh, that's unfortunate, right? So we went and yeah. made arrangements, went. And then like after we were into the house or after we were already stationed there living in a hotel, he finally comes to us and he was like, hey guys, I know you're paying out of pocket for this hotel, but I could get you into the house for free. And you can just, you know, rent it from the sellers until closing. And I was just kind of like, that would have been nice to know before I spent the $800 in the hotel, right? So it was just a big <laughs> misfortune of events. And yeah. I had a girlfriend down here at the time that was in real estate and she was doing really well at it. And I was just like, you know, if this guy can sell houses and our girlfriend can sell houses and she's <laughs> doing amazing, let me go try it. And that's just kind of how it happened from there. <laughs> That is so funny. And, you know, that reminds me a little of my story. When I, I first got in the finance business, we bought our first home back in 1998. We were living down in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I, I was always pretty good at math and science. I studied engineering and all that. And I went through the home loan process and I was like, man, this is kind of backwards, you know? And, and we had all kinds of surprises. We went to the closing table. We were young. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't know we had to have certified funds or wired funds in. And so we brought the checkbook, which is a no-go. And it cost <laughs> us thousands of dollars more at the closing table than we thought that our guy had led us to believe. And I was like, man, this is a terrible experience. I mean, we were able to grind it out, but I was like, wow, I've got to, I, I think I could do better. And, and it seemed like it would be interesting and, and fun. And so... It's just funny how you get involved in these things, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You know, I'm glad for the experience, though, because I definitely make make it aware that our all of our military clients know that they don't actually have to be here to buy a house. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, because you were, you said you were in Maryland at the time, right? Yeah, we were in Maryland at the time. So we were fortunate enough to get stationed back here. That's how we ended back up in Newport News. But yeah, it was, I, I've definitely taken this to heart and it's become a passion of mine just helping military clients. You know, I love helping the ones that are stationed in Japan and they don't actually get to see the house until after they sign all the paperwork. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do you, do you get a lot of clients like that? I mean, that's your area of focus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 90% of our buying business is nothing but VA is military VA loans. Mm hmm. And you say Japan, or is that a lot of Air Force or it doesn't really matter which branch? It is. It is a lot of Air Force. It's a lot of Air Force. And so with them, they actually usually come back to Langley because Langley is one of the largest Air Force bases. Mm -hmm. So we do deal with a lot of Air Force. And, you know, we help Army. Look where we live, right? We live somewhere. <laughs> we are fortunate enough to have all the bridges. Yeah. But our bridge yeah. better is at Air Force and Army. Well, I'm, I'm, I have a leaning towards the Air Force. My daughter is in, she's an ROTC right now in college for Air Force. So, you know, go, go Air Force. <laughs> yeah, but I'm surrounded by Navy people down here too. <laughs> so yeah, definitely pro-military and thanks for your service to your husband and to the service that you provide to all the military people as a real estate agent. Because, I mean, I've never had to do, I can't even imagine what it's like to, to be in Japan and I'm, I'm being relocated back to the States and I'm going to buy a house, but I've never even seen the house. I mean, what, tell me, how does that go? How do you handle that? Well, I'm a very blunt person. And unfortunately, what you see on my face is usually exactly what I'm thinking at all times. So while I'm on video with them. Um, like if I walk into the house and it smells like cat, I am saying it smells like cat, right? And so it's just really a matter of trusting. And I know what they're going through as a military spouse. I understand like, 
having a group mm-hmm. of kids and find the place to live and find the better school districts and all those things. I can just relate with them and relating with them and being honest is absolutely goes a long ways with our military folks. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really good. I mean, being blatant and being just direct, I could see how that would be a huge, I mean, not only a, like a competitive edge, but just really absolutely required if somebody they're putting all their trust in you because you got to live with it, right? When they show up at closing or maybe after they've closed at a distance, they show up and they move in. You're like, absolutely. You don't tell us it smelled like cats. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> Right. And, and, you know, I've had the unfortunate at one point that a client came back from Japan and we let the sellers live there for, you know, a little bit after closing. And mm. unfortunately, it looked like she never let her dogs outside after the closing. Uh, so imagine wow. making that phone call to them when it was like four o'clock in the morning to Japan. And they were getting ready to fly back to the States. I know the clients are still really good friends to this day because it was just like, hey, this is what we have to do. We need to fix it. Like, let me get the contractors in here. It was just more mm-hmm. of a go, go, go. But um, mm-hmm. we kind of joke in the military world. We talk in bullet points and not paragraphs. And that's just because <laughs> we won't, we just need it now, right? Give me the details, drip off the band aid, and let's keep it moving. <laughs> Stay on mission, right? We're going to take the hill, yes, whatever absolutely. it takes. <laughs> you know, well, and you know, I would we say, believe in, go ahead. I, I was just saying, we believe in what we're doing so much that we actually have a love it or leave it guarantee to all of our buyers. So if they don't love their house when they get here in the first 12 months, we'll turn around and sell it for free for them. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So they have they have some recourse if it just turns out like, you know, it's just not what they thought it was going to be or whatever. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. It's funny you mentioned like bullet points. I think of the military as like acronyms. Everything's an acronym. You know, it's it's a whole different <laughs> acronyms language, right? Within, <laughs> <laughs> within your bullet points, Absolutely. right? <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's cool. So tell me, you've been in this business for nine years. You've got a, a successful brokerage, a company. You've got employees and staff and all. Like any good entrepreneur, you're building a business, right? Not just building Absolutely. yourself a, a job, right? So- what are you seeing as the as the business owner, the leader of that team, and your experience in real estate? You know, the market's obviously changed a little bit here, but what what where are we now, and and where do you think we're going to be going in the next three, six, twelve months? Yeah, I think we're going to go back to the market we had pre COVID. I think we're going to be back to an even market. I hate to use the word bubble, but it's the best way to to describe it is where we live, and we have government, we have military. Most people move here because somebody told them they had to. Not because they actually, you know, wanted to move here, right? So with all the government money that we have, I think we're going to go back to a more even market so that, you know, our VA clients are being able to get closing costs again. And so I really think the market is going to go back to pre-COVID, like pre, you know, 2016, 2017. We're just dealing with a little bit higher interest rates, which that's okay because either you're going to pay 100% interest rate in renting or you're going to pay a 7% interest rate in buying. You know, you got to pick your battles. (laughs) <laughs> That's good. I haven't heard anyone say it like that. A hundred percent interest rate in renting because you're building no equity, right? You're just putting someone right. else's kids through college, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah. And 7%, I mean, you know, so I have a little more water over the dam than you. And when I started in 98, you know, you look at the interest rates, you know, you say seven, we're actually back down to around six. Now the market is easing on the interest rate. Mm-hmm. It's going to keep coming down to around five, probably by the end of the first quarter. But that notwithstanding, you know, it's still five, six, seven is still a great rate in the grand scheme of things compared to the history of where interest rates have been, right? Yeah. This two and a half to three percent craziness was just Yeah. 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 And besides, these people can always refinance if the rates improve anyway, right? Absolutely. Yeah, nothing says that you can't. And you know, again, with us still with the military and the VAs, you get refunds with no money out of pocket, right? So yeah, you know, it's a great yeah. way to be able to do that. VA has got the absolute best loan program benefit that of anybody. I mean, bar none, without even coming close. It's just absolutely the best. So if the if like military people aren't taking advantage of that, they're really, really missing, you know, a, a huge opportunity, I think. Absolutely. They really are. And, you know, after they get out of the military, if they're, you know, if they're broken in any way is what we call it, broken, they have a disability rating in more than 10%, you know, mm. they even have it even better because that funding fee is waived, right? So it's, you know, you're talking tens right. of $10,000, give or take, depending on purchase price, 
that they only have to pay for because of their sacrifices and the injuries that they received along the way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's, it's absolutely right. I, I see that a lot and that's, it's just an amazing benefit for sure. So, so going back to pre COVID time, the market, more of a balanced market where your buyers can get some closing costs. It's kind of a, maybe you don't have 18 people competing for the same property and like bidding it up over the value of the property and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you actually have more than one property to go show your client. I used to explain the market like Black Friday when the latest and greatest electronics just came out at Best Buy, right? It's completely wrapped around the building. There's a wait line to get into the house. Those markets mm. weren't fun for anyone. They weren't fun for the seller. No. They couldn't stay in their house. They had to leave. It wasn't fun for the buyer because they're having to go up. So we're actually going to get back yeah. to a time that we can have a little bit more negotiations and be able to show a client more than one house at a time. <laughs> yeah, you, you can actually get there and it's not already under contract, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's good. No, I'm with you. I think it's a win. It's definitely a win for everybody. And uh, I think, I think, I mean, sometimes sellers, I think probably sellers have had to adjust their mentality a little bit too, right? Thinking, you know, they could just name the moon for the price and people would pay mm -hmm. over that. It's like, okay, you made 40% in equity in the last two years. So what are you complaining about? <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Like you got so, your money, now it's time to move on. <laughs> you got you got your money, but that's another reason why you want to get in the game, right? Because if you're not in the game, you you miss those opportunities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you have many of your clients use their VA loan to like buy the home when they come in the area, and then maybe move to a different area and keep that home as an investment, and then buy other properties? Yes, I. Yeah, absolutely. We have tons of clients that do that. They collect houses at every military mm -hmm. station they live at. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to build wealth. And a lot of times you can keep using that VA benefit. There's a lot of ways that you can do that. And if you refinance the first one because you have equity in it now, and then you just reuse your VA, it's just what an amazing tool, right? Yeah, and it's a great retirement tool for them too, right? 20 years in the military. Now you built houses up along the way. You might not mm -hmm. even have to go back to work if you played your cards right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I have a friend, uh, another realtor over here in Norfolk. And that's what she really focuses on is, is helping her veterans use that VA to build wealth, you know, in the long term. And just mm -hmm. let's look at, hey, you've got your military career, you're going to retire there. Let's get a, a real estate career, basically, because you have to live somewhere anyway, right? And you got to retire from that. That's awesome. And I, you know, that's one reason we opened the property management. So we just recently opened Stripes Property Management, different company. I own both of them. But, you know, our military were coming to us going, hey, like we we really want you to manage your property and we were having to refer it out. And, you know, I really mm -hmm. felt like I, other people wouldn't do a service like I did because it's dear, dear to my heart, right? I live this life. So I want to make sure that, you know, their property is being taken care of. So that's the reason we just recently opened that is to make sure that these, our military focus is still being able to help them when they're moved on to the next duty station. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense because you've already got a client, you've got, you've got a trusting relationship and you're going to help, you're going to help manage that when they move on and get the next property. I mean, just a natural fit. So that's a, again, that's another entrepreneurial thing, right? You're thinking about how do I, how do I turn lead into gold, right? How do I make modern alchemy and create some value, right? Yeah. Because yeah. You, there, there are some, there are some horror stories with management companies and things. And so if you've already established the relationship, then it's an easy, I'm very comfortable now. Hey, just manage this thing. I'm the kind of guy that I don't want to do any of that stuff, right? I've got some investment properties and things. I just want to find a good person to take care of everything and just, you know, leave me alone, basically, right? <laughs> Call me if there's a big issue. But other than that, right. yes, I have clients like that too. They're just like, you know, we keep a we keep a buffer in their accounts just in case for those small things. But right. anything over a certain dollar amount, our agreement says that I have to call you and get your permission to do it. But if it's a minor thing, you know, let me just go fix it. You got bigger right. things to worry about. This is why we right. keep the buffer, the reserves in the account. No, that's great. That's a beautiful approach. So shifting gears a little bit, tell me this with your experience in recruiting agents and training and leading agents and whatnot. What makes a great real estate agent today? Just hustle. If you have someone to hustle and drive and willing to learn, they make the best agents. I have an agent right now who, in her, she got licensed on October 28th of this year, and she currently has four under contract with two closing this week. You know, and 
Right. Whoa, wait a minute. Amazing. Wait a minute. Time out. Say that again. Say that again. When did she get licensed? Lic October 28th this year. Which is about four under five contract. weeks ago. Absolutely. Four under contract. Okay. Well, technically two now because two already closed this week. So hustle, huh? Drive and a willingness hustle. to learn. And obviously, obviously, she's got a lot to learn, let's be honest, in five weeks, right? Yeah. But she's getting, yes. she's getting it going. Absolutely. Just um, being a sponge. That's what we tell all of our brand new agents. Come uh, in this office and be a sponge. Ask me mm -hmm. questions. I know if you're asking questions that you want to learn. And so, and that's all mm -hmm. she did. She like, if I'm making phone calls, she's making phone calls right beside me. If I was doing a training, she was here. And that's all she did. And that's how she came up with her clients. So that's what makes a great agent right now. Just being a sponge and doing what other others want. Well, do you think it's an advantage for her in a sense that she came into a market on the other side of the mess from, from the last two years? Because I mean, last two years were crazy, right? You actually have to the work last two years, now, right? To go yes, get deals. They, they create bad habits the last two years, right? Like you could, I mm -hmm. would say like you could, like you were, people were sneezing, catching COVID, right? I was saying the same thing about the real estate market. You could sneeze and pick up a buyer. It wasn't hard, right. right? Or you could sneeze and pick up a seller because sellers knew they were going to get more for their property. The last two years created bad habits. And I'm actually a national real estate coach as well. And that's what we've been preaching to our agents, to our coaching clients is you've got to get back to the basics. If you don't get back to the basics, you're not going to survive in this market. And, you know, what does that look like? That means outlining your prospecting time, you know, at least two hours a day, Monday through Friday, dedicated to that phone mm. to do your prospecting, to do your follow-up, because if you're not dedicated to those couple of things, you're really just not going to survive in this market. So that would be what I call one of the essentials to success, right? So, and, and entrepreneurs, and, and even an agent that's a starter agent, they're self-employed. So they're, a, they're an entrepreneur, whether they realize it or not, right? But you, you, what would you call it? Daily non-negotiables, daily success habits. It's like, you got to, if you don't take control of that time and do that, the one thing that only you can do that brings the dollars in and makes the things happen, then, mm -hmm. then you could, you could chase, you can move papers around your desk all day long. Right. At the end of the day, I was really busy, but were you productive? Yes. Yeah. We call so, it busy work. Right. 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 Cause it's comfortable. It's easy. Yep. Well, that is amazing. So hustle drive and a willingness to learn. So literally in five weeks, she's come in. She's got four deals she's going to close. So takes away a lot of excuses from people out there that are saying, oh, all well, my buyers disappeared and what's the market going to do and waiting for the phone to ring and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. So, uh, so what motivates you personally? I'm not kidding. That's a lot of, I know I have three teenagers. And so oh. you know, I, I had three kids by the time I was 21. Okay. So I never want to have my life choices outline and affect my kids. So my kids are a big reason I do what I do so that they are not having to live a life of what the stats say that we should be living, right? But also, mm -hmm. I get a lot of joy in watching these baby agents. And when I say baby agents, I mean brand new agents, right? Completely out of just pass their test. I get a lot of joy yeah. in just watching them grow. Mm -hmm. And I know some of them won't be on my team forever. I've tried a few that already walked yeah. off and went and did their own thing and maybe starting their own team at this point. But just watching someone else succeed in this business, that's where I get a lot of joy from. That's awesome. So you said you said you're a coach as well. So do you coach you coach agents <laughs> from all over? Is that is that kind of part of your business plan? Yep, I do. I'm actually a club wealth with Michael Hellickson is a big reason why I grew so fast. So I'm actually a real estate coach through his or his organization. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do you find that as a coach, you you even learn yourself more in terms of because now you're teaching it and you're listening and you're pulling people out. And you're like, oh, yeah, I need to really do this stuff I'm teaching them to do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Or they're teaching me things. I'm like, oh, what? I am not the techiest person in the room ever. My agents will tell you, oh, y'all bear with me, right? Like, let me figure it out this Zoom thing. And they'll right. laugh. But, you know, I'm not the techiest person in the room, but they're, they're teaching me things about... <laughs> Facebook and LinkedIn, all these tech things. I'm going, oh, wow. Like uh, 
thank you. <laughs> I'm supposed to be poaching you, but in return, I'm getting something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, a good coach is going to listen and learn. It's, listen a lot more than probably talk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what about any, have you had any failures along the way that you've had to bounce back from? So I think that's how we succeed the most, right? Is learning from our mistakes. You know, my husband's military, right? So we started in Maryland. Mm -hmm. The big thing is that I kick myself in the butt for all the time is closing down shop in Maryland and moving here. I should have just kept the team going and went mm -hmm. here and did that. I've had what we call a practice team, you know, where we start this team or we think we're going to do all these amazing things. And I, it actually doesn't work out the way we thought it would. And so I learned from it. I learned from how I approach people because I am very direct. So I know now I see <laughs> that. I'm going to put on some cake gloves every once in a while. But there's been lots of things that I have learned from over the years. And I, I learn every day. And that's what kind of makes the top 1%, the top 1% is just learning from those mistakes. Right. Right. And I would say that's awesome. And then not just learning from them, but not being afraid to make them, right? Yes. Because, I mean, if you don't, you know, so many people are, are paralyzed by the fear of making a mistake or looking bad or what are people going to think or what are they going to say? And you know, it kind of took me a long time to get over my own life. It's like, well, at the end of the day, most people don't think much about me anyway. They're not, they're thinking about themselves. So who cares, right? <laughs> at the end of the day. Yes. You know, go dance in the rain, go be silly. It's okay. I mean, you just be yeah. you, right? And if you learn from it along the way, that's great. I'm a growing person and a person who's learning from their own mistakes. Yeah, that's awesome. So you mentioned your husband a couple of times and he's, he's in the military. Is he involved at all in your real estate company too? Or is he just so busy doing his he thing? Is. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to retire next year or in 2024. I'm saying you're my okay. twins graduate high school. So it's super exciting for our family that there's a lot going on. But yeah. yeah, he's definitely involved. I am the people person. I am giving the deal. Let me train. Do not sit me behind that computer and expect me to do paperwork. That is not my personality. And so he actually does all of our bookkeeping, all of our accounting, oh. all of our tech things. So yes, Sweet. he's very much involved in the business. Oh, that's great. That's great. My wife has been involved in several different businesses with me over the years, and it's 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 been a lot of fun. And, you know, we definitely complement each other. So when you can do that and you know your strengths and weaknesses, it's it's that's an awesome thing for sure. That's one employee you don't have to worry about. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I married my complete opposite. So everything that I'm good at, he hates. Everything that he's good at, I absolutely hate. So it works out perfect for us. <laughs> Man, that's, that's, that's beautiful. So what do you guys do for fun? You know, we like to go on vacation. That's usually our big thing is we try to take, you know, two or three vacations a year and just mm. like kind of either go to the mountains and when I say vacations, it's usually weekend trips. We enjoy going to like the local restaurants and breweries around here. We do enjoy hiking and working out. So that's usually kind of where we're, what we're doing on the weekends. If we don't have anything else going on, we're trying to be, you know, working out or being productive. Sounds like you're very active. That's cool. But it, that gives you that energy probably, right? To work when you're working out all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's got ADHD in me. I can't stop. <laughs> well, that's good. There are, there are worse, worse problems to have, I think. So uh, just kind of winding down, tell me a little, is, is there any particular book that you're, that you're reading or that you've read? Cause you seem like someone who really likes to go deep and, and improve, improve that's, that's uh, made an impact on you in your career. Yeah. So there's been the, the Miracle Morning by mm -hmm. Hal El Elrod. Um, mm -hmm. That one has really made an impact on my morning routine. I used to be the person that didn't get up until nine o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. and now I'm lucky if I sleep into four, you know, so that's been a good one. I am rereading eat that frog. And I think that's a really good one that everyone needs to read. I've read it two or three times at this point, but it's still like, it just reminds you to just do what you need to do. And, you know, don't do the busy work, do the work that actually is productive. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. S start there. I have a friend that says he's a, he's a really successful entrepreneur and he, he has a, an amazing lifestyle and income. And I learned a lot from him. And he said, he talks about eat the frog, which is actually right. He says, but I like to take it one step further. I like to, to find people that will eat the frog for me <laughs> as he builds his team and his business. Right. She has, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. Yeah. So oh no, we're all, and, and yeah, we're all sort of inspired. That. I can't know. 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. So my team and I checked the book and I was reading over it. And like when I run, I listen to the book. Mm. So I was listening to it this past week at the gym and it was talking about setting your goals, right? So we actually took that one step further with the team and I had them lay out in the four different categories and I told them to write out like top three goals they wanted to do in each category. Mm-hmm. which they did and they were really good at it. And then they needed to decide out of those goals, what quarter they wanted to hit, which step in. So we took that one step further and actually had them write a letter to themselves as if they've already accomplished that goal for the quarter. And so mm-hmm. we're actually going to be mailing those out this in 2023 to see kind of where they are at and just kind of speak into existence, right? To figure out those yes. goals, because if you don't know your goal, you're never going to accomplish it. Oh, it's so well said. That's right. That's right. You you can't hit a target that you haven't defined. And it sounds so easy, but everyone needs somebody like you to kind of kick them in the butt to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone knows to set goals and so nobody does it. Yep. It's just like I need someone to kick me in the butt, right? I, I, have, a, I have my own real estate coach. I do my own masterminds, yeah. you know. I, I always need someone to remind me, even when I start being like, you know, there's no use in doing this because we don't go through those days. You yep. have someone there to kind of lift you up and give you a swift kick and say, you know, you're doing this for a reason. Let's keep moving forward. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for coaching. I've had coaches on and off over the years and everyone needs someone to keep them on track and on target and ask the hard questions, right? The questions that we ignore and we just don't want to deal with. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Kelly, this has been great. We're, we're kind of winded down now. Tell, tell everyone that's listening, how can they get in contact with you if they want to do some real estate, particularly in the VA, military, and that world? Absolutely. So we cover anywhere from Williamsburg to Virginia Beach. You can find us on Google at Crush Real Estate Team. You can also find us on Facebook. And then our office phone number is 757-210-3551. Awesome. That's fantastic, Kelly. I'm going to get that in. We'll get that in the show notes. So it'll all be in there. So people listening will get it and they'll be able to click on it and call you and all that jazz. So I really appreciate your time today and you coming on. Absolutely. It was nice to meet you, Paul. If we are not on social media or Facebook together, definitely find me. I'd love to follow you some more. Yeah. Awesome. This is great.